moving on to our very first story. The Bank of Ghana is today making available some $20 million to commercial banks that are interested in buying part of the $1.8 billion cocoa loan. The move is part of the regulator's strategy to help stabilize the Ghana city, which has seen some consistent drop in value over the last three weeks. George Raffi has more. Interested banks are expected to make their bids via a secured Reuters platform today, which is backed by the Bank of Ghana. However, each bank is likely to get up to $4 million. The move Joy Business understands is to ensure that all the banks are able to get a fraction of their total demand. Some of the commercial banks have, however, told Joy Business that limiting the amount of dollars they can purchase is not good enough. They argue if the current challenge facing the city is demand-driven, then everything must be done to make available more dollars onto the market. But the Bank of Ghana has argued they need to be strategic with this intervention so they don't deplete all the international reserves, which has hit almost $5 billion as of November this year. Many will be looking forward to see how the Ghana city would fare post this auction which is currently being sold on the market at around four Ghana cities, 20 pesos. Now, there appears to be mixed reactions uh, uh, over moves to consider using laws to regulate interest rates in the country. President Mahama, at a recent meeting with business owners, disclosed he is seeking advice from experts over calls to use legislation to check rising interest rates in the country. While some have welcomed this initiative, others think that the economy is not well developed for such interventions. Group head of domestic banking Ecobank, Patrick Akinwuta, is one of those who thinks that government should allow market forces to determine interest rates. As the global economy itself uh, shapes out from various other factors, I think it's important to keep on fine tuning what is the, rate, the, the structure of rates. Uh, if by next year, uh, the levels required that rates should be adjusted. I think the government will take the right step. But, but you think capping is not that legislating to cap is not a favorable thing to consider. And then let's look at uh, how government checks is borrowing from commercial banks. That should be the way forward. It is not proven that capping rates is a sustainable uh, uh, lever for managing the economy, but it could be a tactical step in order to achieve certain behavioral change. But in the long term, free markets, markets' ability to respond to the genuine participation in the economy is always a long-term solution. However, it is true that where there is need to have an intervention, uh, that is also the role of government. I think the most recent is Kenya. Uh, but it had its objective because the same Kenyan environment had the first level of liberalization around uh, money and all that. So once again, there are tools available to government. They typically are not a long-term tool, but where appropriate, it could be a short-term tool. But the ultimate is for governments to allow the markets uh, to be efficient enough to influence the right behavior. Uh, but of course, that's in the realm of an ideal situation. Uh, where the situation is not fully ideal is also the role of government to take appropriate tactical steps. Now, the Bank of Ghana is optimistic the workings of the Exim Bank will help transform the structure of the economy. Government today finally launched the Exim Bank, which it believes will help address funding challenges for the country's exports. Speaking to Joy Business after the launch, Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Abdul Nasiru Isahaku, says the bank couldn't have been established at a better time. Well, it's an important milestone in our effort to generate forex. You recall some uh, about a year and a half ago, we had this uh, workshop on uh, boosting foreign exchange through exports. I think this is one of uh, sort of an institutional 
uh, milestone to developing this, I mean, supporting this effort, where we support the export sector through the Exim Bank, generate more foreign exchange, so that would save us from, you know, uh, uh, you know, importing a lot of the items that we could otherwise have generated or, or produced locally. Mm -hmm. So it's an important milestone in the national effort towards, I mean, you know, uh, generating foreign exchange. Some would say that this couldn't have come at a better time when efforts are being put in place to stabilize the Ghana city as well. Of course, you know, we've had that question. I mean, what can we do in a more sustained fashion to deal with the foreign exchange uh, uh, problem that we've been having. And I think this is a great effort. It's, it's a more structural approach to dealing with the problem rather than, you know, short-term interventionist approach. Yeah. And even today as well, you're doing the auction. I understand you even increased it up to 40 million. I, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And you know that that's from the cocoa proceeds that we're getting right now that we're selling directly mm -hmm. through the auction and rule-based approach to the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you have to tell those businessmen who are still panicking? I mean, it looks like you're doing more things to calm the market. I mean, there's really no need to, to this panic, you know, that's uh, going on right now. It's speculative, but there's no basis for it because we have some. Meanwhile, Chief Executive of the Ghana Exim Bank, Dr. Osei Bafo, has been speaking to Joy Business on how the bank will be structured. What do you make of it? Well, it's um, a welcoming news, uh, long overdue. Uh, considering our various trading partners uh, worldwide, the Exim concept has aided other uh, jurisdictions to expand their market frontier and push the risk factor and also export it to a large extent. So we think uh, at this stage, converting the Exim concept into a full-fledged bank is a welcoming news. Uh, we look forward to the details and its implementation. You talked about the fact about looking forward to the details. Um, one would ask that how, what has been the communication to you at AGA and businessmen? Because I knew about the, the Exim Guarantee, I knew about EDIF. How different would this be that would make businesses optimistic that things will indeed change? Well, uh, moving in from the EDIF to the full fledged bank uh, gives uh, the bank the room to leverage on its. Um, network and its funding sources also gives it the ability to raise other funding, uh, developmental funding into the bank because you and I are aware there are several cheap funds externally and uh, with the Ediv Bank in place now that gives it one good leverage that it could expand its portfolio and then it gains further credibility such that we could use the Exim Bank, not the Ediv to uh, do other international export, leveraging on the credibility of the bank and the uh, backing of them. Now, away from that, local printers are lamenting what they say is a significant slowdown in election-related bis business this election season as compared with the previous seasons. This they attribute to a number of factors, including the general challenging economic situation, as well as clients having to transfer the large-scale contracts outside the country. On the other side of the coin, those in the car rental business say business is good. Let's hear more in this report. There are signs of an election all over Accra. From the giant billboards, the flags of various political parties, posters, t-shirts, as well as customized party paraphernalia like pens and handkerchiefs, among others. A clear indication that political actors are spending massively on campaign items. David Kumoji is the chief executive officer of Arakan Limited, a printing and designing firm. He shed some light on their business in such times. 2012, what happened was we started working very early. By this year, we started working very late to the end. Actually, business started coming when they getting close to the election. By 2012, we started about two, three months before the election. By this year, just a month to election that we've been very busy working. Those in the print and design industries have over the years managed to rake in cash from huge campaign spending. However, operators say the story is different this election year. 
KTA Kwesi is the chief executive of Promo Guide, another printing, publishing, and advertising firm, and explains they had high hopes this year, but those hopes have been dashed because of the challenging economy. Like today, I just went to buy a dollar. I have a lot of dollar on me now, like to do business. And I remember some few years back, I used to, you take, dollar is like two CD. But now, today I bought dollar four CD, 20 something per dollar, which is, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's killing the business. You can't buy any machine because we don't produce machines here. We don't produce most of the materials that we use here. We have to import them. And to spend so much CD to get small dollar, how much can you get? It's killing the business. Seriously, it's killing the business. Well, business is not that smooth, um, for especially some of us who are registered business um, firms, um, uh, because um, the, the pricings of uh, our our items are a little higher because you pay tax and you pay bills. And so it's not that it's not that smooth as, as it used to be this time around. Things are quite high. But they will come for the quotations. At times they come and they don't come back. At times they want to do thousand, but because of the pricing, they cut down the cost, uh, the, the, the quantity they want to do. So that's a challenge. The printers are not happy about how most contracts are being taken outside the country to their disadvantage. Because we have a lot of Chinese in the system that um, are bidding with us. Uh, the same contract, you know, and um, out there in China, things are quite cheaper because um, of the factories, and the raw materials uh, coming from there. So when they bid with us, what do you expect? They get advantage of, of the same job we all bid together because they get cheaper. I, I believe that the government should come to our aid by making sure that the local people the contracts are given to the engineer, uh, indigenous people. I remember the Chinese man approached me and said he linked me to somebody. Go and take the job and give it to me. I'll go and do it in China and bring it to you. So and on that note, we wrap up the substance edition of the market. Please, I would once again would like to sincerely apologize for the technical, technical hitch at the beginning of the program. Many thanks for your company. My name is Emmanuel Boyaji. If you have to join me again, same time tomorrow for other uh, stories in the world of business. Good afternoon.